What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3. All the rockets are done now, all ready to launch, just waiting on a few more uh, bits of maybe oxygen, likely. Um, water is obviously the quickest one to fill up, the oxygen takes a while. It transfers at one kilogram uh, per, per block, but of course each tile of pipe holds 20 kilograms, so you can imagine you need 20 to fill each tile and there's many many tiles to fill because i fill up the entire thing there you can see the telescopes ready to go the new nose cones as well now we have plenty of glass as well um so we have the solar panel on the top as well for extra power this is my idea about making a lot more rad bolts um obviously then bits at the bottom will be removed i'm just not removing them yet uh, but they will be removed and replaced hopefully with a rad bolt chamber Inside, you can see we have a great tall a bathroom and a luxury barracks, as I said. And this is replicated throughout all of the uh, rockets. I'm using the vent there, the standard vent, to easily stop having to do automations. That will take it up to about two, two and a half kilograms of pressure, which is fine. Uh, and then the pipe fills the rest. In there is everything they need. Again, freezers all around so that the goods will not be wasted. No food will be wasted. Uh, any food that is left over when we bring it back and dismantle will, of course, just be frozen. So that can then go straight back into our standard storage, which is also frozen. So requiring now fuel and oxidizer, we know that we have enough fuel to get to where we're going. But this is where I start to realize that even though we've got this sort of one of the end game rockets i'm still struggling in terms of we can get there but we can't get back so i can't send the rocket that far out the maximum i can send it is five tiles which means the maximum the rocket can actually travel with the fuel that i've got is 10. now i obviously want to be able to get home i don't want to strand them out there forever so i can only go five tiles out so what i need to do is send each one of the three rockets five tiles out in the hope that they can uncover some new lands for us and that's where i'm trying to figure out now what can i do to make it get further of course i can chuck an extra fuel tank and an extra oxidizer on there that will then let me go 20 tiles which is 10 tiles each way but building on that means then that i won't be able to put in the satellite telescope because i'll have no space I'm wondering whether I'm missing something obvious and I'm hoping you guys can help me with that. If I am, then please do tell me. For now, though, we'll make it work as it does. Now, they do obviously go out and send off. You can see I'm increasing the fuel there, which everything fits. It's wonderful. But, of course, just adding fuel isn't a solution because the oxidizer is used at the same amount. So you'd need an oxidizer tank as well, which is why I'm hoping that the liquid oxidizers are a lot more efficient and maybe the two tanks of the liquid oxidizer is enough for two fuel tanks i haven't actually got there yet so i still don't know i'm still learning as we go but what i do know is we have super rockets um the rocket there on the left hand side this first one i'm going to experiment with that one the two rocket one and two or loki two and three and loki i've named because that's the name of my son um, are of course going to be sent out to start doing some actual work and by work I mean uncovering some tiles for us annoyingly these things the, the the machines that count the fuel the maximum they do is 500 kilos now these large engines hold 900 so I have to do a 500 and a 400 and I know that sounds like it's not an issue but I mean, really, why, why does it not have a 900 option? Because there are engines that hold 900. Don't know. Don't matter. Like I say, it's not the end of the world. As you can see, nice and simple, that's going to go in there. So that rocket will now have 900 plus 900, which is 1,800 fuel and 450 oxidizer, which unfortunately doesn't mean it can actually go any further. If anything, it just makes it heavier. But, yeah. As we talked about this cryo chamber that I tried to create earlier on, this is where I actually 
had the idea of switching it. So now you can see I'm switching this out to chlorine um, because, as I've just said, that is what my next step is. Now, it was full of quite a lot of hydrogen because I forced it in there with a high valve. So, as you can see on the right-hand side there, I've just blown open the wall and it's rushing out. Give it a bit longer and then when I'm happy that enough of that is out of there, I will, of course, close off that gap pump in the chlorine and turn the machine back on and see how much liquid chlorine we actually get at this stage although I did have the idea of the chlorine I still didn't have the idea of moving it close to the rockets which I pre-warned you I think two episodes ago um, but yeah it certainly makes more sense to have these cryofuels near where they're gonna be used when they're actually in the rocket they don't decay they don't warm up they're fine um, but all of the time between then and now, it's a bit awkward. And I have had some mishaps where my liquid chlorine has then, of course, turned back into a gas and damaged things. So the closer the better. And although it's a pain in the backside, I will rip out this entire building and rebuild it on the other side, left-hand side of the asteroid, as soon as I remember. Uh, you can see there actually while we zoomed out I have separated the water tanks as well so there is just a, a clean water a polluted water and a salt water one now obviously the polluted water one has two I think or maybe three geysers salt water is just one and the clean water is two um, I haven't shrank that though because I couldn't be bothered to rip out all of the machines that were in there I've just left it on the hope that as we uncover new asteroids we'll uncover new geysers to move in just looking at how much bleach stone I've got to send some of that over to the room as well because not all of it but a lot of it the idea is the bleach stone will off gas or sublimate into chlorine gas the chlorine gas being in that room will immediately uh, liquefy because that room will be negative 70 degrees or so um, and then that will be an amount and again I don't know how much it will create versus to fill the tank, which is 450 kilograms that we need. In the meantime, Loki 2 and 3, which are our rockets that we're going to send out to try and uncover some new tiles, are ready to go. As I said, number one, I'm holding back to do some science in with the cryogenic stuff or the liquid chlorine. You can see the liquid chlorine tank is on there, ready to be built. It's just not been built yet, nor do I have the actual liquid chlorine, but... We'll get number two and number three launched and hopefully uncovering some new lands. We may even get lucky and find a asteroid that's full of liquid chlorine or chlorine gas or bleach stone. Any of those three would be a massive gain for us actually at this stage. But we'll have to find out. So they'll fly up, get to their destinations and then they will start uncovering. Now you get the little... A telescope icon showing you where they are discovering i'll show that as we get there and then it takes about half a cycle for it to uncover it and then it moves to the next one but they can only of course go five tiles away from where they are so you can see that's where i'm sending them and we'll see how they do when they arrive bit of an issue on the right hand side where the storage is that we're getting a backup of carbon dioxide um, and i can't build a pump or anything because obviously as you can see it's full so what I'm going to do is just rip a hole in the floor there and I will allow it to drain out. One tile is going to very slowly allow the carbon dioxide to fall through. Yes, we are going to get some of the hydrogen and polluted oxygen coming through. But polluted oxygen is better than carbon dioxide for them. I don't want them holding their breaths and having that negative effect while they're doing so. Um, I need to break this as well because of course there is a liquid there that is blocking the gap. But as soon as that opens up, we should equalise in pressures. The carbon dioxide should be forced out of the base and then other ones should come in. Okay, so piping in with a high pressure vent, the... What's it called? The, the hydrogen gas did get pushed out. There was a little bit left over, but to be honest, it got pushed out when I opened the doors as well. You can see it there on the left-hand side. It also pushed out some chlorine but I'd rather it just be as clean as possible. So it's mostly chlorine in here, but I think there is a bit of oxygen as well. No hydrogen, though. Small pump at the bottom in that tile. I have put it upside down, and that will work. The idea is that I'll put a, a switch on that and tell it to pump it out when I actually need it. For now, though, you can see that it's pumping out all of that gas from that tank into that room. Of course, 
the maximum limit for the high pressure vent will be, I think it's it's 20 kilos per tile. So the cooling loop is working. We just need to connect again that ethanol line to the standard loop like this and it will start to move the chlorine. Now again, we don't want the chlorine to get too cold because the chlorine freezes around negative 100. The ethanol freezes around negative 110. So really we want to keep it around negative 70, negative 80 to be safe. Um, and to do so, we're going to need some form of automation, which is what I'm trying to work out now with the pipes. Got to wait for them to finish it now, but you can see the bypass line is in. There is a log on there as well. Uh, this pipe is for where the liquid will go when I'm ready to do that. Um, now, I don't need it yet, but I've just put the piping because it's quite a lot of building to do. Because as I said, it's got about it's got to go about 7,000 million miles, roughly, give or take a mile or two. Also, uh, turns out I've run out of ceramic because I stopped it. Um, so that was dumb. And in terms of what we're needing now, ceramic really is the best option uh, for insulation. So, yeah, I'll put a little bit down, go over to the ceramic, make that kick back in again so we start getting ceramic made. And then I can leave it alone and come back to it, maybe in a cycle or two when we have plenty. And here it comes now, the loop is filling up. That right-hand side there you can see is around... 17 18 degrees currently but it is going to go through those thermo actuators very shortly reducing it by 50 degrees and then the chain the next time it comes around should start to liquefy some of the chlorine uh, negative 50 degrees is closed but not quite there it's negative 60 that's required the shut off valve there you can see there is a inline pipe thermo sensor that is going to tell us whether it's cold enough or not. If it's cold enough or too cold, it will get sent around the loop. Obviously, none of this is because it's all standard temperature around 20 degrees. You can see there now it's going through those thermal machines and being cooled off. So I have stopped any new going in. And as that process kicks in, it will continue to cool it and cool it and cool it. You can also see the check valve has kicked in. Because the liquid is cold enough that it doesn't need to be cooled anymore. So it's now going around the line. And there you go. We've got puddles of liquid chlorine on the bottom being created. Condensing from that gas. Just tweaking the setting there ever so slightly. That I want it to be as cold as possible without being able to get to negative 100. Is the aim. Now to make it easier you have less of the thing. The less of the machines. I've got five which makes it more complex because that's the each time I send it through there it's going to go down five so actually having two or three of those would be much easier to manage than what I've currently set up but uh, it's working right we've got liquid chlorine that's what we needed we just haven't got anywhere near 450 for one tank in mind three rockets that we've got which is what, 1,350 kilos of chlorine, liquid chlorine is what we actually need. The rockets are out there and you could see there that there were the telescopes icons appearing where they are uncovering land, one there just above, directly above where I've just clicked. That is the icon from the shuttle doing its research. And again, it takes about half a cycle for it to uncover that and then it will move to the next one. Once it's finished, you'll see there'll be no more of the icons there. You can do one of two things. Move the rocket if you have the fuel. Or you send it home. New planetoid has been di di discovered, as you can see. So they are working. Uh, whether they're relatively useful planets or not, that is another question. Okay, so to make sure that I have full efficiency on my chlorine and I'm not wasting anything... Where I get leaks because inevitably I've turned it back into a liquid when I shouldn't have done and I've had to mop it up. Or where I uh, get solids and require to do it, I'm going to do this sort of setup. For now though, because I haven't made that mistake for the chlorine, but I have made it for the ethanol. 
I'm going to do this. So if I cool the ethanol down too cold, it will be frozen. So we'll get solid ethanol. That will go into the setup you've just seen I've put in there, which is a conveyor belt, a chute, and a conveyor belt loader. And I'll load it in. If we make a mess and have to mop it up, them two pumps there, or pump emptiers, whatever you bottle emptiers, that's the one. Uh, we'll empty it there. In that bottom square will be a simple pump, and that will pump it back into the ethanol line. So we're not wasting any ethanol. And it's a setup just to try it, but this is exactly what I'm going to do for chlorine, liquid chlorine as well. So whether liquid chlorine gets spilt on the floor, we can fetch it and put it back into the system. Or if we make it too cold and freeze it, we can put it back here and it will uh, melt back into a liquid and go back into the system. I will need to change that bottom tile to metal though. Perfect timing. And that is what I'm doing right now. So that any solids that end up on there, the metal tile will significantly increase the speed that the ice will melt. As long as obviously you increase the temperature of it. And there we go with it working. Currently in full full bloom, full spring, full setup. Uh, bleach don't come in there. I've put it on a tile above because it won't off gas if it's in that centers column in the bottom because under a liquid it doesn't off gas. So that is off gassing now. We have run out of actual gas. So the bleach stone is off gassing. Immediately then that gas is being condensed into the liquid. Uh, then pumped up this pipe into some sort of storage setup that I'm going to have up here um, that will hopefully work. I'm hopefully going to surround it by a vacuum, but we'll get to that. You can see I am now forcing out as much ceramic as physically possible. Ceramic requires clay and coal. We have 300 tons plus of both of those. So no shortage of ceramic materials. Just I forgot to uh, turn them on. Yeah. New. So we are uncovering quite a lot of resource fields anyway, asteroid fields as they're called, not asteroids. Uh, quite a lot of nice resources there, specifically what we're looking for though, not found yet, fluorine, graphite. Um, we're looking for the, oh what you call it, the gas island, you know where the, the cow, the flying gas cow, gas moose are, uh, also that because allegedly they are chlorinated wait that is it yes we found it that was it that is the gassy asteroid and it is full of liquid and frozen chlorine which is exactly what we need so although this setup i'm trying now is working but we have nowhere near enough chlorine to make it be viable We've just found the mother load. Now, how we get there is our next step. It's going to be quite a big project. It's quite a long way away. Uh, we're certainly not going to be able to fly there and back without getting there and having a whole setup to refuel. We're going to need to send over a lot of planetary loads, interplanetary loads, um, to do so. In the meantime, I'm just trying to see how I can store it. But it don't work very well, so I'm not going to bore you with that. And we don't have anywhere near enough anyway, so we'll look at the Gassy Island next, I guess. Gassy Island, whatever it's called. When it appears on my actual list, I'll, I'll give it its proper name. I'm not going to call it I, Asteroid 5 or whatever. It's going to get its proper name. But you can see there, the, the idea is insulated, and then that one tile gap will be a vacuum, is the plan. Press on the Super Radbolt Generator. Um... Now, this does work. It will work. Though, the heat that is generated, you're going to have to do something about. This is the vacuum of space. There is no way that the heat can dissipate. So, you're going to have to think of other ways. Now, there are a couple of ways you can do it. One being the proper machine that is designed to work in a vacuum. But that means getting a loop of liquid up here and basically getting it to actually work. So, before I do any of that, I want to see it running. All of these need to be facing down, like a so. Uh, then at the very bottom of the chamber where we was originally, I need to put in a couple of the reflectors to guide this where I need it to. Effectively, all of them will then link into a radbolt chamber. 
Yep, so you can see there the two on the left, basically either, no matter which tile, the first or the second tile that the Radbot comes down on, they hit them reflectors and go into a circle and they end up going directly into this Radbot chamber. You can't turn the Radbot chamber, it has to face up, so you will need even more reflectors. Um, but yeah, they will then reflect into the interplanetary dongle and fill it up. Now, there are a lot of other things we can do and there will be a future episode where an automation on that is much better. My first attempt is a bit messy. We are at time now though, so I am going to end the episode here and we'll finish this off at the beginning of the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Take care. Goodbye.